welcome back to JW's Backyard. So I've got 296cc diesel engines here. I've got the orange one that's bought for a new project. And I've had this red one on this go-kart for probably three or four years now. And I always get a lot of interest in these engines, a lot of questions about them. So today I'm gonna go over some of the basics about these 196cc diesel engines. And I'll go ahead and say from the start, these engines are not powerful. Uh, this red one kind of struggles with this cart here. It'll make it move, but it's nothing to brag about. But it's been reliable. I haven't changed the oil in it since I put it together years ago. And it starts first, second pull almost every time. Let's get into it. We're going to go ahead and go over some of the basics about these things. I always get asked where you get these things at. And you can get them on Amazon or eBay. They go from between $200 and $240. You just go with the cheapest price you can find. They're only advertised to have about three horsepower and about six pounds of torque. And that's less than a... $150 Predator 212. So it makes sense why it's struggling with that larger go kart and it turns less RPMs. But you still have that cool factor of rolling coal in a go kart. So for the crankshaft, the inside thread pitch is M8 by 1.25, and the diameter of this crankshaft is 20 millimeters. Now, the standard kind of US spec crankshaft on these small engines is three quarter inch. So all the cheap 30 series torque converters and clutches that usually fit small engines will not fit this because three quarter inch is 19 millimeters and this is 20. So you can find 20 millimeter clutches online but they're kind of expensive for what you get. And uh, what I have done on the red one is I ground one millimeter off of this shaft. So now I can buy any of the standard US spec clutches, torque converters that fit a three quarter inch shaft and they all fit. So a whole lot more options. Something to watch out for with these engines is if you just got it and it won't turn over even though you're pressing the decompression switch, the side cover may be pushed in. Uh, this is the issue I have with my red engine and something I've seen quite a few people post about. They come packaged very poorly with a thin cardboard box and about a quarter inch of styrofoam on top. So during shipping, the side cover had got pushed in and the flywheel was stuck up against the side cover here and it wouldn't let me turn it over. But I just took the side cover off, pushed it back out and was able to turn the engine over fine. Now this orange one does come shipped a bit better. It had a wooden crate with a bit more styrofoam. So it may not be an issue with the orange one, but definitely with the red version. You need to make sure you put oil in it before you start it and need to put some fuel in it. And people always talk about my diesel fuel in a gas can. They'll say, that's illegal. Well, you tell me where you find a diesel fuel can that has an easy pour spout in this size. And as far as oil goes, they do have a recommendation in the owner's manual. Looks like you can use 10W30 or 15W40, and they have temperature ranges and what you can use those at. I do run this in the winter sometimes, and on the red one, I use some Motocraft 10W30, and it's run fine. So I'm gonna put some 10W30 in this one as well. And they don't tell you how much oil is supposed to go in there. Uh, there's no actual volume, but they do have a dipstick. And if you look in the manual, it looks like at the bottom of the threads on the hole uh, is the low point and the full point is right at the top threads in the hole. So as long as you have the engine on a flat surface and just fill it up till the oil comes out, it'll be full. All right, so we got our oil right up to that top thread, and that should be full. And next is this red knob here. This is actually your throttle and the way you turn the engine off. So with it all the way up in the top position, that turns your engine off. And this engine will not start with this knob in this position. And the way this mechanism is designed, you're essentially supposed to pick the speed you want the engine to run at, and clamp it down and it'll run that speed at all times. These engines are advertised for like water pumps and stuff like that. But if you need a variable throttle set up like you need on a go-kart or a mini bike or something like that, you can set that up, but it is a bit more complicated. 
I do have a full video on how to set up the throttle on these things to be variable because I have had this red one on my go-kart here for a couple years. But the gist of it is you put your throttle cable through the bottom here, connect it to your arm, and you have to leave the knob loose. It has to be loose. Essentially, you make your throttle cable just tight enough to keep it just barely off of the off position. And there is enough play in this cable that if I want to turn it off completely, I can just force it up and turn it off. But otherwise, your tension in your cord is what's keeping it off of that off position and keeping it running and idling. And then when you press the gas, it just pulls it down and allows it to return as well. So next is this red switch here. This is your decompression switch. This is what you'll use to prime your fuel system. And this is also what you'll use to help you start this thing. Otherwise, you won't be able to pull the pull start. It has too much compression for you to be able to pull it. It'd break the cord before you were able to even get the engine to turn over. So when you first get these things, you have to prime the fuel system. All you have to do is just make sure that your throttle here is all for the stop position. Push down the decompression switch and hold it. That'll let you turn the engine over, pull that pull start quite a few times to get that fuel out of the gas tank, through that injector pump, and up to your injector. Next, to start this thing, remember you have to make sure that your throttle here is off of the stop position or you can pull all day long and this thing is not going to crank. Make sure you get all the slack out of the pull start and then you push your decompression switch down and you pull your pull start. Now it's really important that you do get all that slack out of that pull start before you press your decompression switch because otherwise when you go to start it, it'll catch and it's gonna yank that handle right out of your hand and trust me, it doesn't feel good. Okay, so we're gonna start the red one here since it is bolted down to something. Now remember to get all the slack out of your pull start, make sure it's tight so it doesn't yank it out of your hand. Make sure that your throttle is not on the off position. Push your decompression switch down and then give it a good pull. You can see, all we have to do to shut it off is push that throttle up and it'll turn it off. Now, you can use the decompression switch to turn it off and it will turn the engine off. The instructions say do not do that, but I've done it quite a few times and I haven't had any issues yet. Now, the thing with a diesel, especially on a go-kart or a mini bike, is that you need to really have some sort of kill switch. Since a diesel does not have a spark plug, you cannot wire up a standard electrical kill switch. You have to have some sort of way to either shut off the fuel, let off the compression, shut off the air, and the easiest thing that I have thought of is wiring up a wire to the decompression switch. Uh, one like you would see maybe uh, on a lawnmower throttle and just have it mounted somewhere here to be able to pull that decompression switch down and turn the engine off in case of an emergency. But as you can see, I haven't hooked it up yet, but I do have the cable and just need to go around to doing it. I'll show you that you can turn this off with that decompression switch. And something else to watch out for is the air filter. So on my red engine, I was looking at the filter one day and realized it was black and had soot just caked up in it and it was getting really and it was getting really bad airflow and the reason i even checked was because it started smoking way more than it had ever smoked before well what had happened is the soot from the exhaust had been sucked up into the intake 
over the years and was stopping it up. So just be mindful of that, that the exhaust, the soot from the exhaust can get in the intake and clog your filter. So just check it every now and then, make sure that it is still fresh and clean. Another little thing with these engines, I had the same issue with the red engine, but if you take the intake off, the gasket that they put on is not the same shape as the actual intake port. So it's not gonna make a huge difference, but if you trim this gasket down and you see there is some overlap there, you see it right there in the corner. If you just trim it down to fit that intake port, you get a little bit of free power. But that's about all I got for you today. I'll see you next time.